dating study unlocks the genetic code of attraction. Mating study unlocks the genetic code of attraction. You're listening to H-A-K-E-Y-M News, presented by Hakeem Ali Bokas Alexander on Noom Vibe and Spreaker. Presented for H-A-K-E-Y-M News in association with World Reading Club and Uniquilibrium. This edition's reading focus comes to us from neurosciencenews.com, and it's titled, Mating Study Unlocks the Genetic Code of Attraction. It was published under the categories of genetics and neuroscience on March 14th, 2024. Summary. Before I get into the summary, hello, Wandering Fool and Janelle, a.k.a. Dr. Lovespell. Oh, Dr. Lovespell, that's what this is all about. Love spells here on uh, this neuroscience news article about the genetic code of attraction. Let's see what it says. Summary. Researchers uncover the nuanced mating behaviors of nematodes, revealing, sometimes called nematodes by some people pronounce it that way, revealing a complex interplay between hermaphroditic and female roundworms in their quest for reproduction. While females actively seek out males, tracking them by smell for mating, hermaphrodites exhibit a starkly different approach, avoiding mating until they deplete their sperm supply. This research not only enhances our understanding of nematode reproductive strategies, but also offers insights into the genetic mechanisms of attraction and behavioral evolution. The study suggests that the presence of sperm or seminal fluid in hermaphrodites acts as a behavioral regulator, highlighting an adaptive strategy to maximize genetic dissemination. Key facts. One, female nematodes exhibit efficient mating behaviors, including tracking males by scent, a previously unknown fact. Two, well, I don't know. Isn't that known by humans? Don't, uh, don't uh, women dislike stinky dudes? <laughs> and this is a little bit different, though, of course. Two, hermaphroditic nematodes avoid mating until their sperm supply is exhausted, showcasing behavioral, behavioral flexibility and an evolutionary strategy to maximize gene passage. Three, the study provides new insights into the genetic mechanism of attraction and the evolution of reproductive strategies in one of the most basic model organisms. Source, Rockefeller University. Sparks fly when a female nematode meets her mate in a petri dish, tracking him by smell. He beelines over and is pregnant within moments of physical contact. But for the hermaphroditic versions of these tiny roundworms, it's a very different story. Anatomically, female, but capable of self fertilizing within their own supply of sperm, hermaphrodites remain emphatically uninterested in mating until their sperm supply runs dry. Only then, Will they seek out males? Within such previously unknown details about microscopic mating rituals may lurk clue to a larger understanding of the genetic mechanism of attraction, according to a new study in Current Biology. And here we have an image here of a woman on the left and a man on the right facing each other, touching noses with uh, some nice sepia and earthy tones. And in the background, there's a a, uh, an enlarged image of a DNA strand. And the caption reads, from a biological fitness perspective, any animal should want to maximize its own input into the gene pool. Credit for this image is Neuroscience News. Of course, when this is published on hakeymnews.com as well as Spreaker, the link to this article and that image will be there on the show notes and in the coverage. Continuing, 
The findings not only fill substantial gaps in knowledge regarding a key model organism, but also shed new light on the evolution of reproductive strategies. Now, I want to take a moment here. Why do they refer to uh, the nematode as a model organism? You may, you may be wondering. Uh, so, what is a model organism? That's that's something that should be clear. There is a, a there are a few of them, which is one of the reasons why, for example, um, you know, to the anathema of many people who don't like it happening, they use uh, white mice in a lot of research because a model organism is a non-human species that is studied to understand biological phenomena and the results are expected to apply to other organisms. Model organisms are often used in research areas like genetics, neuroscience, and developmental biology. They are chosen for their ability to reproduce easily in a lab setting, short generation cycles, and the ability to generate mutants to study diseases or certain traits. And that comes from a Google search and it's a generative AI uh, search, which is experimental. All right, so continuing. So the, the findings not only fill substantial gaps in knowledge regarding a key model organism, but also shed new light on the evolution of reproductive strategies. Biologists are really only beginning to uncover how behaviors evolve, and courtship behaviors are among the most striking that we see, says Rockefeller neuroscientist Corey Bargman. We studied nematode mating rituals to better understand how behaviors change between species. Female nematodes. Commonly referred to as roundworms, nematodes are a diverse group of organisms found in almost every habitat on Earth. Among a handful of species exist hermaphrodite, wait, among, among a handful of species exist hermaphrodites capable of self-fertilization. Bargman's team chose to compare strategies of hermaphroditic and non-hermaphroditic members of the Cenorhabditis genus. Or Cenorhabditis genus. These animals all look the same. Well, I got to use a different voice. These animals all look the same, says Margaret Ebert, lead author on the study and research associate in the Bargman lab. But they use their nervous systems differently to produce vastly different bathing behaviors. The researchers began by observing interactions between male and female Cenorhabditis. We know almost nothing about. Oh wait, let's bargain again. We know nothing. Almost. We know almost nothing about female behavior. <laughs> as as most guys, at least themselves, Bargman says. Before studying hermaphrodites, the first question was, what females do. The team noted three mating behaviors among female nematodes. They track males by smell. They cease moving upon physical contact with the male, and they open their vulvas to facilitate mating. The female is a model of efficiency, Ebert says. She displays a strong drive to find a mate and, once in contact, cooperates. Within a minute of meeting a male, she's pregnant. One of the most surprising findings was that the female tracks the male by smell. We hadn't known that, Bargman says. It is generally assumed that males do the choosing. Hermaphroditic nematodes. The team then turned to closely related hermaphroditic cenorhabditis. These nematodes began their lives with a complement of sperm and egg cells and do not track males by smell. To the contrary, they actively avoid mating, and when males make an attempt, it's like the bull at a rodeo, Ebert says. They make jerking movements to throw the male off and run away. But as they age, hermaphrodites continue producing eggs and cease producing sperm, leaving them with gametes they cannot self-fertilize. Suddenly, male nematodes become appealing. Once they run out of sperm, they switch over, Bargman says. It's not that hermaphrodites have forgotten what males are for. It's just, it just masks those behaviors for part of its life and then unleashes them later in life, revealing an astonishing level 
of behavioral flexibility. This mating flexibility makes evolutionary sense. From a biological fitness perspective, any animal should want to maximize its own input into the gene pool. As long as hermaphrodites can produce offspring all their own, they have no incentive to mix with males. But once they are incapable of doing so, it becomes evolutionary, stri evolutionarily strategic to mate and produce offspring with at least half of their genetic material. The team suspects that the presence of sperm or seminal fluid acts as a sort of regulator, signaling that mating behaviors should be put on hold. These findings constitute a fundamental step toward answering the most basic questions about how animals evolve to optimize passage of their DNA. Our findings add another piece to this puzzle, Bargman says. These species change their approach to maximize the total number of genes they can pass to the next generation. It's almost like the hermaphrodites read a genetics textbook and asked, how can I maximize my fitness? All right. Well, about this genetics and, attra and attra attraction, about this genetics and attraction research news, the author is Catherine Fenz. Of course, the source, once again, is Rockefeller University. The original research is under open access and is titled Evolution Remodels Olfactory and Mating Receptive Behaviors in the Transition from Female to Hermaphrodite Production by Corey Bargman and others in current biology. There's an abstract here, so I'm going to continue reading that. This is the more scientific part of it. It's just the abstract, so it's a short piece of the research by Bargman, but they've also got a very short snippet here, snippet here, so I might as well continue that. So this is the abstract, all right? The abstract reads, evolution remodels olfactory and mating receptive behaviors in the transition from female to hermaphrodite reproduction. Highlights, female and hermaphrodite mating behaviors differ in related nematode species. Females are attracted to volatile male odors, but hermaphrodites are not. Oh, volatile? The same olfactory neuron pair drives female attraction to males and vice versa. Sperm-depleted hermaphrodites express some latent female mating behaviors. Summary. Male-slash-hermaphrodite species have arisen multiple times from a male-slash-female ancestral state in nematodes, providing a model to study behavioral adaptations to different reproductive strategies. Here, we examine the mating behaviors of male-female uh, gonochoristic uh, senorabditus species in comparison with male-slash-hermaphrodite androdioecious close relatives. All right, continuing, we find that females form or we find that females from two species in the elegans group, uh, chemotax to volatile odor from males, but hermaphrodites do not. Females, but not hermaphrodites, also display known mating receptive behaviors such as sedation when male reproductive structures contact the vulva. Focusing on the male-female species, Cenorhabditis nigoni, we show that female chemotaxis to males is limited to adult females approaching adult or near adult males and relies upon the AWA neuron specific transcription factor ODR7, as does male chemotaxis to female odor, as previously shown in C. elegans. However, female receptivity during mating contact is ODR7 independent. All C. nagoni female behaviors are suppressed by mating, and all are absent in young hermaphrodites from the sister species C. brigsae. However, latent receptivity during mating contact can be uncovered in mutant or aged C. brigsae hermaphrodites that lack self sperm. These results reveal two mechanistically different components of the shift from female to hermaphrodite behavior. The loss of female specific ODR7 dependent chemotaxis and a sperm dependent state 
a reduced receptivity to mating contact. Hermaphrodites from a second androdioecious species, C. tropicalis, recover all female behaviors from upon aging, including chemotaxis to males. Regaining mating receptivity after sperm depletion could maximize hermaphrodite fitness across their lifespan. See, that was short, short uh, abstract. Neuroscience News also asks you to join our newsletter. Sign up to receive our recent neuroscience headlines and summaries sent to your email once a day, totally free. We hate spam. I almost said sperm. We hate spam. And only use your email to contact you about newsletters. You can cancel your subscription anytime. And for those of you who don't know, Neuroscience News posts science research news from labs, universities, hospitals, and news departments around the world. Science articles cover neuroscience, psychology, AI, robotics, neurology, brain cancer, mental health, machine learning, autism, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, brain research, depression, and other sciences. You've been listening to HAK EYM News presented by me, Hakeem Ali Bokas Alexander for HAK EYM News uh, in association with World Reading Club and Unequilibrium.